At some point, this whole thing is going to be exposed. And it's really bad, and it's really dangerous, and it's really sad for the media and the mainstream media. It really is sad. President Trump in Montana tonight holding a rally with his supporters and calling attention to the anonymous op-ed about the so-called resistance in the West Wing. Meantime, in Washington today was denial day. Top administration officials rushed to say they were not behind that op-ed in the New York Times. Nearly every member of the president's inner circle is speaking out. President Trump ignored questions about the anonymously written op-ed the New York Times said was the work of a senior Trump administration official. The writer claimed to be part of the resistance against the president, among those working diligently from within to frustrate parts of his agenda and his worst inclinations. It's not mine. Top administration officials, including nearly every member of the president's cabinet, have issued statements of denial. I come from a place where if, if you're not in a position to execute the commander's intent, you have a singular option. And just to leave. I think it's a disgrace. Uh, the anonymous editorial published in the New York Times represents a new low in American journalism. First Lady Melania Trump, usually mum on political matters, said in a statement to the writer of the op-ed, you are not protecting this country, you are sabotaging it with your cowardly actions. The New York Times defended its decision to publish the piece. The editor of the op-ed section said on a podcast his team was 100 percent confident of the author's identity. The president tweeted, are the investigative journalists of the New York Times going to investigate themselves? Who is the anonymous letter writer? House Democratic leader Nancy Pelosi's take, don't shoot the messenger. It's a sad statement, and it is a manifestation of corruption, cronyism. Cronyism, just having your friends around you, incompetence of some of the people who are advising him. Well, White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders called the author of the op-ed a gutless loser.